Event photographers, today we're going to talk about how to photograph a speaker on stage. We're going to talk about what your objective is, your camera settings, the labor involved, and the gear you use. But first, if you guys are new to the channel, my name is Mick. I'm an event photographer. I've been doing this for over 10 years. I also teach photography. I always encourage you guys to take a look at my website so you can see who you're listening to, what my work looks like, if I'm qualified. I also provide you guys with a lot of resources. If you click on the resource tab, I'm building out resources specifically for event photographers that are learning the craft. Let's start with objective. So first, your objective is to capture the defining moments. You do not need filler. I'm mostly looking for a shot that really says, okay, this is what this moment was about. I'm not doing video. It's really important to understand you're looking for the money shot quote. So I do this by hitting several different angles. Usually I know the winning angle and that angle is the one that includes some sort of logo behind the speaker, especially if it says the name of the event, you really want a shot with that in it. Um, I don't really like the frontal angle because it's not really very dynamic. So usually I am hitting those 45 degree angles. I'm kind of waiting for that moment, that moment that really is the highlight. It could be a big smile. It could be a very serious look. It could be anything like that, but it, it needs to define that moment. And so once I get that, I'm free to kind of play. And that's when I'll kind of try different things. I might try, if you guys have watched my video on candid photography, I have a lot of tips on how you can en enhance your candid photography with your composition. Maybe I'll do that. I'll shoot from behind the speaker and do more creative stuff. But first, I need to get that shot. Now, my first speaker is often the MC, and I will have a lot of opportunities to photograph them, but that doesn't mean I get the shot of them and then I don't photograph them again. I'm always looking for more moments, but really the burden of the job is eased once you have that defining moment and you can move on. Let's talk about your settings. I know everyone's going to be interested in camera settings and I don't think camera settings are that important, but when you are starting out as a photographer, there's a lot of insecurity about the technical side of photography. Once you understand it, it's less intimidating but I will give you guys my go-to settings, but they aren't magic settings that you need to follow, but I find they work quite well. I'm typically, first of all, I'm always shooting in manual. The reason I shoot in manual is because my lighting isn't changing. It's going to be consistent the entire time. And so what I do is I open up my aperture to f2.8, the largest my 70 to 200 goes to, and then I set my shutter to about 125th. Now that is plenty fast enough because this particular lens does have image stabilization. If it didn't, 125th might not be good enough, but it does and it works. And my guest speakers, my speakers on stage aren't really moving around too much. They're not moving faster than what I can handle with 125th. So my ISO is typically at about a thousand. And no matter what event it is, um, if we're using artificial lighting, typically it seems to be between an ISO of 1000 and 1250. It doesn't change much. Honestly, I think it's just about always there. But of course, if you're shooting in daylight or, you know, it just depends in, on the venue. So you can't rely on those settings. You're basically gonna use your meter and see how it looks. At this event, I'm actually handing off JPEGs to my client right away. And because of that, I do need my exposure to be spot on. So I'm making sure I'm really dialing it in once I have it, it's not changing. So as I mentioned, I'm shooting with a 70 to 200. I find that this lens perfectly does the job. It gives me the versatility of being able to zoom in and out. I have a lot of people in the, in the audience and shooting with the prime would be limiting because the exact position I would want to be in maybe to get the shot I want might have a table there and I can't do that. So I have to work around people and having a zoom is really helpful for that. Now that said, once I have that shot, I my defining moment, I can try different lenses. I can explore different options. Uh, one thing I like to do is put on a 135 millimeter at F2, which has a very distinct look and I'll do more creative shots. I really like shooting that lens at a sort of, um, I guess a right angle from the subject, I will get a shot from them or I'll get a shot of them from behind them, that kind of thing. Again, once you have your moment, you can then play and try different things. 
camera bodies. I don't talk about camera bodies too much on my channel because I don't think they really matter and I want to avoid the whole brand war thing that doesn't matter. I shoot Canon because I've always shot Canon. They are reliable tools. Um, my cameras have never failed me and I feel good about that. And I am most importantly incredibly familiar with these cameras. But if you guys are curious, I am shooting with a 5D Mark III and a 7D Mark II. You guys may notice that my in this video, my lens goes down a few times. And that isn't because I'm taking a break. It's because I'm using my second body to photograph the crowd. This way, I'm able to stay consistent with my settings on my 5D Mark III. And then I use my 7D Mark II. Um, I, I set different settings, or maybe I have a flash on it, and I get reaction shots of the crowd. Truthfully, they may or may not be used, but you always want to give your client as many options as you can. You want to give them thorough coverage. Thorough coverage doesn't mean more shots. It means more coverage. I want to be clear about that. I actually try to give my client, um, I try to do as tight an edit as I possibly can. I don't want to put the burden of finding the best images on them. It should be, you should be doing that for your client. It's really important. So really shoot with intention. Make sure every shot is about something. It could be, or from a very distinct angle, but I try not to give them like a thousand shots that are similar. You don't want to do that. No one's going to thank you for it, <laughs> I don't think. Um, okay, let's talk about how I move at an event. So I'm a photographer that actually thinks what I'm wearing matters a lot less in how I move. Yeah, black is a good idea, but any dark color is fine. Um, the idea that you're going to catch people's eye if you're not wearing black isn't necessarily true because not everyone is wearing black, and so you don't necessarily stand out by not wearing black. Um, but yeah, you're going to be a little bit less noticed if you're wearing black, perhaps. But more importantly, you're moving around the audience without being obtrusive. You're not loud. You're not stomping around. You're not blocking people for extended periods of time. Now, the client understands that you're important. Your job is important. And so if you're blocking someone for a few seconds or a minute, it's not a big deal. You need to get your shots. You're there for a purpose. But I try not to stand in front of people. I try not to you know, put my rear end in someone's face, that kind of thing. The way I move through tables, I have to do it very delicately. Uh, often there's not a lot of space. And so I have to do that sort of imagine getting out of an airplane seat. You have to kind of go sideways in order to navigate. I'm making sure I'm mindful of where my large lens is pointed so I don't knock someone in the head, that kind of thing. Uh, this is a more physical job than I think a lot of people realize. And how you can maneuver is a big part of this job. If you're not in reasonable shape, it's going to be tougher on you. If you have back problems, it's going to be tough. Recently, I herniated a disc at jujitsu, and yeah, it was not easy having to work with that, but you just power through it. But again, it is a physical job. So I'm going to leave it at that. If anyone has any questions, let me know in the comments. I really want to be as helpful as possible. If you haven't checked out on my website, I do a, I've created a playlist of all my favorite event photography videos in one spot. Each one has a little blurb about what that video is about, what you might get out of it. I'm really trying to help you guys as effectively as I can. I really ultimately want to build out a photography resource specifically for aspiring event photographers or any event photographer that wants to get a different perspective. I think it, you don't want to have the hubris to think you can't learn from other people. It doesn't matter how good you are. Hearing other perspectives is valuable. All right, that's it for today. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. I appreciate all your feedback. Until the next one.